In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. This morning's Gospel reading, we have the account of the rich man who came to Jesus and asking him what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. Not testing Jesus, but asking him, what can I do? Knowing probably what the answer would be in some part. Keep the commandments. This I have done since my youth. So Jesus says to him, go and sell everything that you have and give to the poor and come follow me. The gospel this morning reminds us perhaps that following Jesus is not easy. It might not be for all of us that we need to sell everything that we have and give it to the poor to follow Jesus. However, all of us have things that we hold on to, like that rich young man. Jesus knew that the man had followed the commandments. But he also knew that the man, though he had followed the commandments, still held on to something else above him. In calling him to repentance, calling him to follow me, as Jesus says, he pointed to that one thing that that man couldn't let go. For him, it was his riches. For you, it may be something else. It may indeed be the money that we feel we need to have and to store up for ourselves here on earth, while we don't store up treasures in heaven. It can be our friends, our prestige, it can be those little bits of gossip that we feel that we need to have so that we can know something that the others don't. It can even be our family. As we put before God those things that He has given to us. The rich young man put wealth before God. We sometimes put other things in which we have wealth before God. And yet, as we come to His church, to this holy community, to be part of the body of Christ, we come here to say to Him, Thine own of Thine own, we offer unto Thee in behalf of all and for all. We come recognizing that that which we have is a gift from God the riches that we have. Whether material or otherwise. That all that we've been given is a gift from God. That He is the one true good one. Not just a good teacher, but the only good one who is indeed God. And in coming to Him, we come to lay aside our earthly cares and to lay before Him a gift of His own that He has given to us. As we give to Him of our time, as we give to Him of our treasures and our talents, as we give to Him what is indeed already rightly His, and that in doing so we might recognize that we're not here to store up treasures on earth, but rather to have and to, be re to receive the treasure of heaven. We're coming to the end of a summer. A wonderful and beautiful time here on the Cape and elsewhere. And yet as we come to the end of this summer and as we recognize the gifts we have been given, whether it's of our family that we've come to visit or the family that has come to visit us, whether it's of the gifts and the riches that we have been given that allows us to do that. Or even if it's of our time, that couple hours that we take away on Sunday morning to not go to the beach. To not sleep in and read the paper, but to rather come back to the very house of God. 
In doing so, we recognize that all of this, the time that we have, the family that we have, the riches that we have, are given to us from God. That in all these things, the good one, the only good one, God himself, is made manifest to us, and so it is ours to give thanks to him. To come here and to give thanks and to give back to him what is already rightly his in our time and in our treasures. And to refocus our lives so that we might tre store up treasures not here on earth, but store up treasures in heaven. That we might, when God calls to us and says, go sell all that you have and come follow me. Whatever it is that he is telling and asking us to give up in place of him might indeed put him first and follow him. It's not an easy thing. And yet it is the life to which we have been called as Christians. To come and to follow him. To take up our cross and follow him. To put away the earthly treasures to give to those who are in need, to give back to Him, who is the only good one, that we too might recognize that He is in all places and in all things. And so as we look out and see the good there, we see Him, who is indeed good. And that in doing so, we might worship and glorify Him in all things, and in all times, and in all places, in giving thanks and praise to Him always the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen.